So here I've drawn out the circle, pulled from the side to the center line, swung an arc, and just continued to move the compass around the circle, creating, connecting dots, creating the plate, right? And then from the center line, bisecting this length, which in this case is six inches, drew a line on through, right, on down. Now, in plan view, this is the common rafter because it runs at 90 degrees from the plate line, plan view. With this roof, there's only one king common and the rest would be jacks, right? There's no ridge. So it's either a single or you you use it to calculate what you need, but actually stack, you know, eight inches on either side to the center for, for two jacks and have no common, but doesn't matter. I'm drawing it here because we want this triangle. Remember, 360 divided by 12 equals 30 degrees, which is the working angle here, 30 degrees. The relationship between the hip and the common rafter. Why? Because we want to know how much the hip travels on the level for every 12 inches that the common rafter travels on the level. So... Draw a line on down through 12 inches, square off it, run it down out, and then run from the center line through the corner on down. Now, the bigger the circle, the more accurate. If the circle is bigger than the triangle, it's going to be more accurate, right? Now, you could take your tape measure and measure this and find that answer by measuring it. Set your framing square for whatever the given rise is, let's say 9 inches. And this looks like just shy of 13 or something. 14, that is. And you could step this rafter off. 13, 7, 8, 9. Or, to be more accurate, we use a calculator. And the way that's done is just labeling the sides. These two first give us the rise and the run, you know, of this little triangle, even though it's laid on its sides. Rise run ratio. We know this one's 12, we don't know the other one, but we know the angle. We have the angle, we can do it. So here we go, we're gonna go uh, 30 tangent. That'll give us the rise ratio times the given 12 equals 6.928. You label this 6.928. And then A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So Squared, right? Squared plus 12 squared equals square root of. This is 13 and 7 eighths. This one is 13.856. 13.856. This is 12, right? That still doesn't give us anything but the plan view length. But if we know what the rise is for the common rafter. So let's say if this was a 9-12, the framing square would set up like this, 12, and it would rise 9, right? So the rafter would go uphill 15 inches, it turns out, and it would meet the hip. It ran uphill some undisclosed amount until it met up here in midair, right? What's the undisclosed amount? Now, since we know that it rises 9, I could... Swing this over here, lay it down flat, mark nine, draw a line from nine and measure this hypotenuse and that would be the hypotenuse of the hip for every 12 inches that the common rafter ran on the level. Or we can, since we know that it rises nine, we already have this number 138.85, we could say squared, right? Squared plus nine squared equals square root of, and that'll give us the hypotenuse up the rake, which looks like 16.52. So this hip runs 16.52 up the, up the rake for every 12 inches that this common rafter runs on the level. 
what I would like to do this, that's in feet and inches, right? 16.5, is one foot four and a half, you know, strong. But if we divided it by 12, we put this in inches, right? So divide by 12 equals, and what's called the secant is 1.376, 1.6. That number, you'd write it down. You multiply it by the run of the common raft or, or the jack rafters or whatever. Uh, and that would give you the hip length. And why, why the jack rafters? Let's say I wanted to know where the hip stack, the common rafters, jack rafter stacked on the side of the hip or something. You can mark it. You never do, but you could. But no, common rafter run, half the span, multiplied by 1.372 would give you the hip length, not including the deductions at the top.